Hello everybody, welcome back to another brand new episode of Decoding the Unknown. I am your decoder, Simon, and today we look at the subject, Did Giants Ever Exist? Written by Katie. Thank you, Katie. I'm gonna read it. We're gonna, uh, discover whether giants ever existed. I mean, prima facie, I'm like, yeah. I mean, it depends how you define giant, doesn't it? Like, there are giants. Surely a giant is just someone over a specific height, right? And I'm sure they, they exist today. They existed in the past. But like the idea of like mythical giants and stuff. Like didn't when people they first discovered those dinosaur bones, like back in the day people were like, these are the bones of giants. <laughs> Giant humans from a yesteryear. And it's like, well, bro, you were off by just a, just a few tens of millions of years there, friend. But um, I was going to say you can understand why they got it wrong. But can you? <laughs> Maybe not. No, let's just dive into it. Uh, the format of this show, if you're new here, first of all, welcome, is that I've never read this before. It's a cold read. We're going to explore it together. Let's go. Giants and giant species have appeared in many cultures and religions throughout history. Ancient Greece had their titans, and there are giants all over the place in Norse mythology. Yeah, I feel like but ancient Greece had their titans. I feel like is more not real ancient Greece. This is like ancient Greece, like, you know, the movie 300 and all of that. It's like, it's not real. There are no giant war elephants. They're just regular sized elephants that do war. You know, there's no titans. They're not real. They're, that's just from like a fictional part that's fictional ancient Greece. It'll be like people in a, in a thousand years being like, no, no, no. Wands, that was the fictional part. That was Harry Potter. That wasn't historical record. There was other history going on at the same time, but there were no wands. Okay? No wands. They also make an appearance in Chinese, Aboriginal, and Native American mythology, as well as deities which appear in Hinduism. You've probably heard the fairy tales of Jack and the Beanstalk, or the valiant little tailor, which put small but clever humans against enormous but ultimately pretty dumb giants. Basically, wherever there are myths and legends, there also be giants. I've definitely heard of Jack and the Beanstalk. I feel like that is ultra famous. The boy trades his cow, he gets some beans, and then he plants the beans, and it makes a giant beanstalk up into the sky where he meets a giant in a castle or some sh like that, right? And he walks around on the clouds. Uh, sometimes you're like, because, you know, I haven't thought about this story. I guess I will be thinking about this story again soon, because I have kids of my own, but I haven't read them Jack and the Beanstalk yet. They're too young. It's too scary. Well, fee fi fo fum you have a face and it is dumb. I watch TV with my kids sometimes, and we'll be watching something like Peppa Pig, and she'll be like, scary, scary, like when Daddy Pig falls down from a tree or something. And I'm like, Peppa Pig is too, too scary for you. That's, you coward. <laughs> They're so weak and pathetic. Um, but I've never heard of the valiant little tailor. And given that it's in the same sentence as Jack and the Beanstalk, I really feel like I'm missing out on some huge cultural touchstone. I never thought I'd be sitting here writing about whether giants were a real thing or not, but here we are. I just go where life takes me. <laughs> I think you made you made this suggestion though, Casey. I didn't come up. I definitely didn't come up with the idea of did giants ever exist? This episode also has a tangential time with a previous one called Why Do People Think Aliens Built the Pyramids? That old chestnut history channel, baby. In that we briefly referenced a theory where alien gods mated with humans, thus triggering a great flood to try and wash this oopsie away. I mentioned that this was a rabbit hole for another day, and guess what? That day has finally come. Why well, I love it when we can mention aliens building pyramids in any episode. You know that. <laughs> I loved reading, and it just hit so hard. But it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The theories that the aliens built the pyramids, kind of vaguely racist when you really think about it, because it's like, ha! How could people in Africa build such ma majestics? Temp uh, pyramids. It must have been aliens. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I mean, I don't like it, but I like the, I like the fact that it, this this crazy conspiracy theory is vaguely racist. Because then when people are like, aliens built the pyramids, I'd be like, it's vaguely racist, isn't it? What are you talking about? And it's like, think about it. <laughs> think about it. Conspiracy theory, people, man. Drive me nuts. So. Throw your skepticism out of the window for a little while, and let's go adventuring deep into giant country. Then you can retrieve your skepticism at the end, because zoiks alert, there are some pretty weird theories in this one. Giants throughout history. 
Let's take it all the way back. We're talking biblical times here. Giants are mentioned in the Old Testament, and for some, this means it's cast iron proof that they existed. Bruh, like, the Old Testament's crazy. Like, the Old Testament, I mean, I get like New Testament has some history in it, but Old Testament's just crazy old stories, isn't it? I know that the people do literally believe in it, but that's really, even of religious people, that's a small minority, isn't it? Like, down below, there's not going to be that many people who literally believe that the world is 6,000 years old, or like, that Eve was made from Adam's rib. Like, that is just obviously bonkers. I'm not saying that that doesn't mean, like, God doesn't exist, or that there are good lessons in the Bible, or that the New Testament is, you know, vaguely could be accurate in some ways, but the Old Testament is just straight wacko, no? It isn't like on 90% even of religious people on the same page that the Old Testament is mostly crazy. Aren't we all there? We should all be there. There's also a few different strands of giant families, so it seems it wasn't such an uncommon thing a few thousand years ago. Okay, so remember how 30 seconds ago I told you to throw your skepticism out of the window? Oh god, it was like three minutes ago because of my tangents, Katie. I'm so sorry. Yeah, mine flew straight back in, so instead of presenting this as a pro-existence and then con-existence format, I'm just going to decode as we go. Although, as I've seen, no amount of explanations can dissuade some people from believing some wacky stuff. So, let's get right back to that Bible. Yeehaw! I'll start at the very beginning. Genesis. In fact, right there in the first book of the Old Testament, there's a reference to giants. But here's the rub already. There are many different versions of the Bible, so the reference has been translated in more than one way. In the King James Version, for instance, I think that's the version I had growing up. Like, you know, when you study the Bible. Is that King James? Is it King James the second version? For some reason, that sticks out in my mind. I always, I always preferred the illustrated Bible, easier to digest. For instance, Genesis chapter 6 verse 4 outright states, There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. <laughs> there were giants buried in the earth like some War of the Worlds. So, there's a mention of giants and then sons of God who impregnated human women, and this also resulted in mighty men or giants. The inference is that these sons of God were not human. So, what were they? Ends of the New International Version of the Old Testament. In the same Genesis verse, it states, The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterwards. When the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them, they were the heroes of old, men of renown. Wait, what? That is the same paragraph as before that is that is the same translate that is like translating the same original was the bible originally in hebrew <laughs> oh my god i can't believe i don't know that i went to like religious school i studied the bible i can't remember what original language it was in <laughs> that's embarrassing feel like it was hebrew so were nephilim giants or sons of gods, or both. According to some Bible scholars, Nephilim, who are only referenced once more in the whole Old Testament and are not even in every version of it, were the unholy offspring of the sons of God and human women. These sons of God are also generally agreed to be fallen angels or demons. These Nephilim were gigantic, super strong, and up to no good. So were they, hu if they're not humans, right, what's the definition of bestiality? Is that, it's like cross-species, sex. Right? So, ah, oh, Jesus Bible. I mean, you 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 got some crazy shit in there. We've got bestiality with giants, and we're in the first book of Genesis. Man, the Bible's crazy. Another school of thought is that they were merely the offspring of a bloodline that had fallen away from God, being that the word Nephilim could have come from the Hebrew word meaning to fall, but could also potentially mean giant. Okay, there we go. What's Hebrew? <laughs> Big brain. This obviously seems a bit more likely, but it's a boring and sensible explanation, so let's ignore it and stick with a more entertaining one. Love it. <laughs> Either way, I'm starting to understand why there are so many passionate arguments over what the Bible means as it's written in such an infuriating infuriatingly vague way. I mean, the, uh, vague language can be very useful in being like, you know, like Nostradamus and shit. It's like, oh my god, he predicted 9-11. And it's like, no, 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 no. He just made some, he made a lot of incredibly vague statements. If all I did on YouTube was make predictions about the future, like all day every day I just sat down in my little studio and instead of telling you about whether giants maybe ever existed, 
<laughs> which they didn't. I mean, look, we've discussed this already. If I just started making vague predictions about future events, and I made enough of them, in a hundred years, people will be able to go back and pick out the ones that I got right. I'd be like, look at that. And that's essentially what no Nostradamus did. That massive, massive fraud. What did you say your name was? Nostradamus. The Nephilim are mentioned three times in the whole thing, twice within one sentence, and somehow their entire history has been extrapolated out of this. Plus, we're looking at translations that have all been styled according to personal preferences, so who knows which version is more accurate. Yeah, like Bible studies and all of this stuff, it's like, guys, you've been... St and it's not just like... It's all religions that have the... Not all the religions, obviously, like the the... the Oh my god, my religious knowledge is so bad. But is it the Abrahamic religions, the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims who... that The Bible's their book, right? Or at least the Old Testament is for the, the, the Jews and the Muslims. And then the Christians are like, now we got the New Testament as well. That's a lot of major religions. That's a lot of people. And a lot of those groups studying the Bible. And the Bible's a really long book. But... Like, if you're going to have a lot of people study for a long time, you're just going to have to make some shit up, aren't you? You're going to be like, yeah, there's Nephilim. They were mentioned in one sentence in the Bible. And now we've got a whole backstory. And people will be like, is that backstory canon? And people will be like, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> And sorry, we're still not done. The New International Version also states that a race or tribe called the Anak were descended from Nephilim and that when the Israelites went to scout out Canaan, they came back and told Moses, we saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, come from Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes. We looked the same to them. So, pretty big people, hmm? Well, yeah. Are we saying that the Bible's so confusingly written, and it's this old school English plus vague messaging? Um, so they saying that these giants were the equivalent size of a grasshopper to us. In which case, they're going to be like the size of a of a skyscraper, because grasshoppers are pretty small. That's crazy. That's not some like regular like oh he's a giant because he's seven foot. I don't know if that's when people become... When is that? I don't know what the medical definition of giant is. This is the Book of Numbers, chapter 13, verse 33, by the way, and the King James Version makes it even more clear what they saw. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, as so we were in their sight. The New International Version also mentions a race called Rephaites, which is translated as giants in the King James Version. For example, in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 11, it says, For only Og, king of Bashan, remained the remnant of giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. It is not in Rebath of the children of Ammon. Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it after the cubit of a man. Mate. That needs some editing. That was a nightmare to read, and it uh, does it even make sense, Bible? Come on, come on. <laughs> Can someone edit this? Make the Bible like easier to read? Like I, you know that book, um, that Anthony Bur Anthony Burgess. I want to say ninety percent sure, but then I feel like that's one of those things that I'll be like ninety percent sure I'm right. People will be like, oh, Simon Anthony Burgess didn't write Clockwork Orange. What are you talking about? Someone needs to translate that book because I read Clockwork Orange, and I'm like, what, f what the f is going on in here? Like. I vaguely have some clue as to what's happening. And I was like, uh, you know one of those books, you know, where you're learning a language and one, one, one page on one side is the original on the other side it's like just an easy to read, you know, it's in your own language. We need like that for Clockwork Orange and the Bible. I know it's in English, but just for people who have small brains like me. A cubit is the measurement from your elbow to the end of your middle finger. I guess this could vary from person to person, but at a rough estimate, King Og's iron bed was about 13.5 feet or four meters long. That's a big bed. That's a pretty big bed, even for a king. So maybe he was a giant after all, although there are no other measurements given for any other beds in the Old Testament. So maybe it was just a tiny bit larger than average. We have no comparisons. Oh, come on, Bible. There's no other mentions of how big beds are. Four meters is massive. That is, my bed's a little bit longer than me. And I'm like 180 centimeters. That is a big bed. You get lost in there. 
And going back to the rabbit hole I mentioned at the start, in the Aliens vs. Pyramids episode, I came across a theory that extraterrestrials had mated with humans. The babies they produced were so abhorrent in God's eyes that he wiped out the whole of humanity with the Great Flood, apart from Noah and his tiny crew, because when it came to repopulating the place, I guess incest was more acceptable than interspecies breeding. As to whether the Nephilim, or outright giants depending on which Bible you read, were actually aliens, or were the results of aliens producing with humans, again, the Old Testament is kind of confusing. Yes, if you're into that kind of stuff, of course the sons of God were aliens. There are things you can bend any way you want to make it look that way, but this is an episode about giants, so seeing as how this is spiraling out of control, let's stop getting bogged down in all the nitty gritty and move on to the bona fide biblical giant that everyone knows. Goliath. In my mind, though, Goliath, uh, the alien stuff is absurd. We're going to leave that behind even quicker than Katie does. Um, in my mind, like the David and Goliath, Goliath was just a big dude. I imagine, like, Goliath is like, I don't know, he's like a big dude, like six something, and David, the guy with the, the, the rocks that he flicks in his head or something, I don't remember, is like just a small dude. He's not like some supernatural giant, he's just big. Have I got that wrong? Because <laughs> I feel like I know this Bible story. When I first started researching this, I didn't think there'd be any way I'd be a thousand words in and not even reached Goliath yet. But there you go. Giants. More research needed than I thought. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> At least the differing translations of the Old Testament agree on this guy. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, his height is given as six cubits and a span. Okay, so he's just... That feels like what? It'd be like... It'd be tall, six cubits, so... Was enough, it'd be like nine foot. Jesus, okay. Using the same calculations as per King Og's enormous bed, that would put Goliath at a whopping nine feet nine inches tall, or nearly three meters. Is there anyone that tall in real life? For context, Guinness World Records could not verify King Og's height. They really mentioned this, I'm not making it up. And currently, the tallest person who's ever lived was Robert Wadlow at 8 feet 11 inches or 2.7 meters tall. That makes... That is absolutely massive. I don't think... Maybe, like, it could just be, you know, six cubits is not this super. Maybe it was a really small person doing it. But let's just say he was a really tall dude. Unfortunately for poor Robert, however, his gigantism caused a whole raft of health problems, leading him to die at the age of just 22. If Goliath really was taller than him, he must have come from proper giant stock, as he was a fierce warrior and champion of the Philistines. Not apparently a poor old chap suffering from the problems that a human with gigantism actually has. See, I thought gigantism was actually a thing, so there we have it. Good. Giant Giants are real. It's people who suffer from a medical condition called gigantism. Also, the story of David and Goliath actually occurs after Noah et al. repopulated the earth. So, is David and Goliath Old Testament? I kind of felt like that. That's got New Testament vibes, doesn't it? Because it's not wildly unrealistic. Assuming he's not, like, nearly ten feet tall. So unless some cheeky aliens or demons were still popping down for a little bit of How's Your Father with the local humans, maybe there was some Raphaite, Anak, or Nephilim ancestry present in the eight people on the Ark, or maybe one eventual result of a small gene pool is a whole race of ginormous people. Goliath had a brother with six fingers, so that may point to genetic abnormalities. There's even a tale in the Hebrew Bible that our current favorite giant, King Og, managed to hang on to the Ark until Noah gave him sanctuary on it so that he could survive the flood, and then Mrs. Noah had some explaining to do. A paper published in Ulster Medical Journal in 2014 by Deirdre E. Donnelly and Patrick J. Morrison states, oh, We suggest that Goliath had a hereditary pituitary disorder, possibly due to the AIP gene causing early onset and familial acromegaly or gigantism. The paper goes on to suggest that David managed to defeat Goliath so easily as the pituitary tumor the giant had affected his lateral vision, so he couldn't see the stone coming. <laughs> I do like it when modern scientists try to like figure out what happens with like modern medical ideas. It's funny. It's also not specified in the Old Testament whether the stone killed him or just knocked him out and David then killed him some other way or killed him by chopping his head off. Holy <laughs> Bible. <laughs> Either way, Goliath is definitely a touchstone for believers in giants, and I guess it means that if you believe the Bible is accurate, you also believe a race of giants inhabited the earth and maybe still does. Personally, I don't believe this. Even if these kinds of stories did actually take place, I'm more than willing to believe that Goliath and his ilk were just very large, burly guys, maybe living in an area with a wealth of natural resources that meant they had the opportunity to grow taller and stronger than people in other parts of the world. Yeah, that's true. That's another thing. Like. 
Nowadays, everyone, you know, people are, most people are of, you know, a similar height. But back in the day, it made a big difference. Like if you came from a place that didn't have enough food, or like a social standing where you couldn't get enough to eat, you would be smaller because you wouldn't get all those nutrients and stuff growing up. And then rich people and like kings and shit, they'd be eating all of this stuff. So they'd be bigger. They'd like be tall. So it's entirely possible that these are just really big dudes who had a good diet back in the day compared to all those other short asses in the past. You know, not getting their good diet, growing to I don't know, like three foot something or <laughs> it's unrealistically small. But like people were smaller in the past and then these giant dudes, I, this is de de definitely believable part of the Bible. I don't think he was 10 foot tall though, that's for sure. Goliath was also decked out in armor and a helmet, increasing his size and probably increasing it even more in the eyes of terrified Israelites. So yes, if this encounter did happen, I'm putting Goliath's size down to an exaggeration of an already physically imposing specimen. Slightly more recent giant news. Let's catch up on the most recent updates in the world of giants. As they haven't been striding across the plains for a while, I think it's safe to say that they're either dormant, extinct, or imaginary. I think they're all buried underground, like War of the Worlds. And then they're gonna come and activate, and we're all in big trouble. In 2016, while compiling a few stories for a This Week in History article, Conrad Stump found this small item in the Springfield Daily News from April the 25th, 1934. A large mound with five white oaks growing atop it blocked the front view at the farm of J.D. Crane near Lake of the Ozarks. After several days spent removing the trees and much of the dirt, Crane came upon broad and flat rocks. Removing the rocks, Crane was astonished to find seven skeletons. While six of the skeletons were of normal size, one measured eight feet four inches. No valuables were found with the skeletons, but seven pieces of petrified material in the shape of human hearts were found. Eventually, Crane and others dug a hole near his front porch, placed the bones in a box, and reburied them. Hmm. Curious. Connie and Al Griffin took up the story for LakeExpo.com. After confirming that a J.D. Crane did have a farm in the area and that previous owners had private family burial plots there, the hunt was on for this buried box of bones. Archaeologist Eric Fuller said that he believed the so-called petrified hearts were probably stone hammers and that therefore the bones were potentially thousands of years old. Unfortunately, they were talking hundreds of acres with no remaining landmarks to indicate where the porch used to be. While it's possible that the story might have been a hoax back in the 1930s, it was not seemingly reported with much fanfare, just as a local interest piece. Yeah, and also like 8 foot 4 is very tall, but it's not like unbelievably ridiculously, you know, it's not like we're discovering some 20 foot 4 per tall person, it's like within the realm of possibilities that just a tall person was there and they died. After all, 8 foot 4 inches or 2.5 meters isn't supernaturally tall, so we might not be talking about giants here, just a really, really tall person. In fact, this person would have been tied as the fifth tallest person we know about ever, so maybe it's a bit unlikely, but it's not impossible. Maybe these bones will be found one day, and we can find out more about who they originally belonged to. And I know Simon will perk up at this bit. Ooh. In 2014, the History Channel released a show called Search for the Lost Giants. <laughs> History Channel, the greatest money-spinning enterprise on bull history, allegedly. In which two brothers go searching for giant skeletons and evidence of giants. I did a search for how many episodes there are, and in a quote that could sum up the entire History Channel output, the first result said, spoiler alert, by the way, six episodes. The suspense of finding something is dragged out through all six episodes, and in the final episode, nothing is found. <laughs> Don't think I'll worry myself too much with that one, then. I hate it. I hate shows like this, where it's like, oh my god, what's, what's gonna happen? happen? And then they get to the end, and it's like, ah, oh, so, so disappointing. disappointing. Lost comes to mind. Or, worse still, it's like, oh my god, this. what was that show? with the dude from Lost where the aliens come to Earth and they build that giant wall. And I'm like watching this show and it finished years ago. And I'm like watching the show and then we get to the final season. I'm like, oh my God, how are they going to wrap all this up in three episodes? This is crazy. There's so much to wrap up. And then it just ends on a massive cliffhanger. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. The last episode was like five years ago. <laughs> you bastards. You just ended it. it explains nothing. I've wasted my life. Enjoying your stupid show. <laughs> Giants hoaxes. 
To keep up the idea that giants did once roam the Earth, people have been creating hoaxes about them for a long time. In 1869, a man called George Hull got into an argument about whether the references to giants in the Old Testament were literal or not. Hull, an atheist, lost the argument and, in an admirable fit of pique, decided to create a fake giant to prove that some people will just believe anything. He hired people on the Hush Hush to quarry out a block of gypsum that was over 10 feet or 3 meters long. This was then carved into the shape of a giant naked man whose body had supposedly been petrified or fossilized. The gypsum went through various processes to make it look older and weather-beaten, and the giant was then buried in a hole on Hull's cousin's farm in Cardiff, New York. Oh my god, dude, this is <laughs> elaborate sh right here. A year later, his cousin, who was in on the hoax, just happened to decide to build a well on the very spot where the so-called giant man was, of course, discovered. While it was very quickly poo-pooed by scientists, mainly because it was a totally nonsensical place to dig a well, this didn't stop visitors from coming to see the giants in their hundreds. Some people thought it was just a very large statue, but others did genuinely believe that it was proof that giants existed. And at 50 cents a pop to see it, it turned into quite the money spinner for Hull and his cousin William Newell. George Hull ended up selling his share of what was now known as the Cardiff Giant to a group for 23000 dollars in 19th century money, which is half a million dollars today. Oh my god, dude. The fast day is like, yeah, yeah, no, I found this giant. Even it, he's not even really, he's just saying, no, just, I don't know, draw your own conclusions. <laughs> and still, what a business. Eventually, even famed hoaxer P.T. Barnum wanted in on the action and tried to buy the giant. But when he was refused, he secretly had a copy made and told everyone that his giant was the real one and that the Cardiff giant was a fake. They're all fakes. I mean, go for it, Barnum. Smart business move there. One of the Cardiff giant's new owners, David Hannum, sued Barnum. But in December 1869, the originator of the hoax, George Hull, ended up coming clean and confessing to the whole thing, stating that he'd wanted to show how easy it was to trick some Christians into believing things. Hannum's court case then apart as the judge ruled that Barnum couldn't be sued for calling the Cardiff giant a fake, as both giant figures were fakes. Hull's giant is currently on display in the Farmers Museum in New York with an admission fee of $15. Really? Still making money after all these years. It's about the same price to see it as it was in 1896. Barnum's fake of the fake is still also in circulation, as is appropriate for an artifact created by the slippery showman more than one place claims to be the current owner. In more recent times, there have been numerous photos coming to light that show people excavating giant skulls or full skeletons. Yeah, people just got better at faking shit. With the advent of Photoshop, exactly another photo digital manipulation. However, it's easy to fake something like this. Just one example is a photo supposedly showing two people unearthing a humongous humanoid skeleton from the ground. This had made the rounds a few times over the years, its location generally being given as India. This feels like the sort of, you know, picture that someone fakes and then it ends up in every YouTube thumbnail ever. Maybe even in the YouTube thumbnail for this very video. <laughs> You're welcome. Who doesn't love some clickbait? The photo was actually from a 2002 digital art competition that specifically asked entrants to create a hoax archaeological discovery. And YouTubers have been thanking those people for thumbnails ever since. User Ironkite picked an image from the real-life Mastodon excavation in New York in the year 2000 as inspiration and inserted the giant skeleton where the Mastodon remains were. He even later pointed out that he had to remove the shovel head one man was holding, so the guy just looks like he's holding a stick with a handle on the end. But of course, none of the real-life news outlets that originally ran this as a true story noticed anything like that. Yes, this really was used in a piece published by the admittedly not very well-known Hindu voice who made tried to publish a retraction after readers pointed out that clearly it was not real. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> giants discovered. You need to do some more due diligence before you just publish that in your newspaper, all right? Incidentally, Iron Kite came third for his effort. Maybe the missing shovel had lost him a few points. <laughs> One giant cover up. Where there are hoaxes, there are people who perpetrate them, and people who believe them. But what if some of the giant discoveries aren't hoaxes, and we're just getting distracted from the truth by going too far in the other direction and believing them all to be made up? What if powerful bodies such as the Smithsonian were not only aware of the discovery of many giant skeletons around the world, but actually were involved in destroying them and trying to keep their presence firmly under wraps? On the 3rd of December 2014, the World Daily News 
Times report published an article online with the headline, Smithsonian admits to destruction of thousands of giant human skeletons in the early 1900s. This bombshell of an article starts off by claiming to quote, a US Supreme Court ruling has forced the Smithsonian Institution to release classified papers dating from the early 1900s that proves the organization was involved in a major historical cover-up of evidence showing that giant human remains in the tens of thousands had been uncovered all across America and were ordered to be destroyed by high-level administrators to protect the mainstream chronology of human evolution at the time. Um, look, World Daily News Report. I don't know what crack you're smoking, but this is obviously just made up. World Daily News Report has got to be just one of these bull <laughs> click farm um, Facebook news things, or like, hopefully, more like The Onion or something, right? There are a couple of photos with the article, one of a man holding what looks like a very large leg bone supposedly found in Ohio in 2011, and a row of giant skulls, one intact but the others damaged. The article quotes the American Institution of Alternative Archaeology. <laughs> That's really a thing. How about we don't do alternative archaeology? How about we do, you know, actual archaeology? I don't know how there can be like alternate... I guess there's alternate medicine, isn't there? There's alternate archaeology as well. Both bull****. Uh, anyway, the American uh, alternative archaeology. Jesus, it sounds like people who just couldn't get into university to study archaeology, doesn't it? Quote, they say, There has been a major cover-up by Western archaeological institutions since the early 1900s to make us believe that America was first colonized by Asian peoples migrating through the Bering Strait 15,000 years ago, when in fact there are hundreds of thousands of burial mounds all over America which the natives claim were there a long time before them and that show traces of high highly developed civilization, complex use of metal alloys, and where giant human skeleton remains are frequently found, but still go unreported in media and news outlets. They go unreported because none of this is real. What are you talking about? Stories like this, adding in photos, just add to the various other giant rumors swirling around and, to some, increase its believability. There's definitely a strong religion versus science aspect to the whole argument over giants, as our friend George Hull found out in the 1800s. Name-checking world-renowned entities like the Smithsonian and the U.S. Supreme Court adds credence to the story that giants were real, so therefore the theory of evolution is wrong, so therefore science is stupid, so therefore we've all been lied to, so therefore the Smithsonian needs to get rid of these giants quick before the whole science community goes up in flames. Yo, there's gonna be records of this. The Supreme Court, at least, something there's gonna be in the public domain, and obviously there isn't, because otherwise this would be accepted fact which it isn't. It seems that the only people really pushing the whole giants are real storyline are people who take the reading of the Bible literally. And I was unfortunate enough to read in the comments on the World Daily News Report story, also a lot of racists. Oh. <laughs> Because, like, why not, I guess, is the internet? Like, okay. Giants seem to have transcended race, at least the ones we currently recognize, and so people commenting on this story are throwing all kind of shade at Native Americans who, according to the article, say the giant burial mounds predate their arrival. This makes the then totally obvious logical leap that giants were Caucasian or white. What? <laughs> How'd you even get there? <laughs> I don't think anyone stopped to think about any of this giant burial mounds predating native people, and it's never been mentioned before. This is world-changing news if true, and it's just one throwaway line in an online article, and it's not even attributed to a specific Native American spokesperson or historical organization, yet people tuck it away into their mental arsenal of why everyone else is a moronic sheep. Those, the people who are doing this are morons. You need sources and science and evidence, not a random online article that is just made up, my guys. Yes, you may have already guessed, but this article is a complete hoax. What? Who would have thought it? The World News Daily Report is a clever combination of keywords with a page title of news you can trust. However, when you go to their website, the slogan at the top says, Aware facts don't matter. It's a satirical website, but even with other articles such as same-sex couples celebrate world's first anal birth after successful rectal ovary transplants. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you go. It's like the onion on f***ing steroids. And pyramids were built with help from dinosaurs, claims top, top Egyptologist. Some people still apparently haven't twigged yet. The photos used in the article have been taken from completely different sources, and the American Institution of Alternative Archaeology doesn't even exist. Good. It should not exist. It's bullshit. Or at least it has zero online presence outside of links back to the story. There really is just no telling some people, is there? No, there's not. 
Which is crazy, because there are people in that comment section who genuinely believe this shit, and it's backing up their racist views somehow. <laughs> I'd like to briefly mention Steve Quayle here, who appears to be the David Icke of Giants. He appeared on Coast to Coast Radio Show, which also made a cameo appearance in our Hell at the Bottom of a Hole in Siberia episode. I mean, it's almost like there's a conspiracy with fake paranormal things in this show or something. Yes, maybe. As well as being some kind of future world event savant, Steve Quayle is also very much in the pro-Giants camp. He believes that Giants are being kept in suspended animation and that they will one day rise up against us. Oh my god! How true! The blurb on the back of his book, Genesis 6 Giants, says, oh god, is a long quote. Here we go. This is gonna be fun. In this second edition of Genesis 6 Giants, author Stephen Quayle reveals the overwhelming evidence of biblical giants as well as the titans found in mythology and legends not only existed but also brought false religions and human sacrifices to our planet. The author also reveals how giants were and are fathered by fallen angels, and the spirits of dead giants become the demons that have played mankind throughout history. You will also learn about historic giants from the distant past right up to today, how modern giants may form the vanguard of the coming attack on the human race, and how you can protect yourself and your loved ones from the spiritual attack Satan and his angels planned for mankind. Oh my god! I can't imagine a sentence, a paragraph that contains more bullshit than what I just read. Amazing. Truly amazing. Oh my god, Harry, click add to cart as soon as you can. All this has come about because of literally a couple of references in the entirety of the Old Testament. Yes, that might also be badly translated and not actually be referring to giants. My god. If you go to stevequail.com, quail spelt in a weird way that I'm not going to spell because let's not go there. In the About Steve section, he's given himself a trademark on his own name. It says Stephen Quail TM. <laughs> Simon Whistler, TM. Although that doesn't mean it's actually registered. When it's got an R with a circle around it, that means it's registered. Doesn't TM just means like seeking a trademark, if I remember correctly, or something like that? Who knows? Is a nationally known radio host, blah, blah, blah. There's also an interesting list of stuff he apparently knew was going to happen, but never bothered telling one in order to prevent it, such as, quote, at inception, Quail warned about the spread of new waterborne pathogens and mutagens occurring in Earth's oceans due to excreted pharmaceuticals from human waste. At inception, does that mean from inside his mother's womb or at the dawn of the age when pharmaceuticals began? I'm pretty sure which predates his birth. Honestly, Katie, uh, I mean, I have to say, kind of sounds like he didn't think about that sentence very much, doesn't it? It kind of sounds like he doesn't think very much at all. <laughs> Pivotally, allegedly, pivotally, he also foresaw this, quote, Quayle was one of the first radio talk show guests to describe the introduction of hoof and mouth disease into Taiwan, which resulted in the total destruction of their hog industry. Wow, not just one of the first scientists or farmers to describe this, he was one of the first radio talk show guests. <laughs> Inspired. Also, quote, Steve is uncannily accurate in his warnings concerning hybrid and genetically engineered viruses and the danger that they pose to humans. <laughs> Katie just writes, I mean, isn't everyone? <laughs> yeah, genetically engineered viruses as a weapon f***ing scary, Steve, mate. Aren't they? Who wouldn't be afraid of that? I tried to go to his dedicated website about giants, but strangely, access was denied. It's a cover-up, I tell you. <laughs> Giant conclusion. So, did giants ever exist? I'm going to go with no. Do they still exist? Slumbering in government labs or under the ground somewhere? Again, no. <laughs> Definitely f not. Will they rise up and decimate the human race? I bloody well hope not. But it's not high up on my list of current things to worry about. Why are some people so adamant that this is true? As we've discovered, it mainly goes back to religion. If there weren't real giants, then the Bible cannot be taken literally as the word of God. Yeah, but there's tons of stuff in the Bible that we... Did. Don't take it too literally. Don't get too Bibled. Like, the Bible's fine. Mo, you know, there's, there's plenty of sensible stuff in there. But there's also loads of crazy that should definitely be ignored. That doesn't mean you're not religious. It just means that, you know, you, you, you also give, you know, some degree of rational thought to something. God would have wanted it that way. Jesus would love it. Somewhat worryingly, in a Gallup poll in 2011, three out of 10 Americans said that they thought of the Bible as the actual word of God. Now, this may include people who aren't actually religious and had just heard that the Bible was supposed to be the literal word of God, but out of those 30-ish percent, over half of them went to church every week. So I guess the takeaway is that a whole lot of Americans believe in giants. Who knew? Yes. 
Well, now you know. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of Decoding the Unknown. If you like this show, please do give it a review. If you're watching it on YouTube, yes, we also publish this in video form. So you can look at my sarcastic face. Uh, like it. Subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>